Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture 4 of trauma 2 and here we are meeting again for another talk on the topic. Um, lecture 3 uh, was about the plot overview of um, the doll's house by Henrik Ibsen. We will continue our talk about the plot of the drama and we will add our understanding um, of the drama by discussing the characters, all of them, and we'll be having um, a depth, a deep analysis of some of the major characters. Um, you would be remembering where I left in lecture three was basically the end of act one, where I introduced um, five of these characters, Nora, um, Torvald, Helen as the maid, um, Krogstad as a low-level employee at Torvald's bank, and Dr. Rank uh, being a dear friend to um, the protagonist of the drama, that is Torvald Helmer. And the activity, the event is um, the Christmas evening. Uh, where Dora comes out from, uh, comes in from shopping for the Christmas and um, the setting is the living room where they all are um, uh, exchanging their dialogues. Now the setting of this act is uh, the same um, and it opens up on the following day. So the time is the following day. This is the second day of their life when it is happening. And we understand where I left, um, we left Nora in a kind of very restless state because she, um, she got to know that uh, Crockstead uh, is the one who knows her secret and her secret is the act of um, illegally borrowing loan from the bank where she signatured a document and she forged her father's signature over there. And that was a kind of illegal act that she did and Crockstead is very much aware of this fact and he keeps, he's keeping, so far he's keeping up Nora's secret. And Nora has told, has revealed this secret and shared this secret only to her friend, uh, Mrs. Lind, who's not a very dear friend of hers, but she's a kind of friend, she's one friend from her um, old days and it's just now that after so many years both of these women they got together. Okay, so we see that Act 2 opens up on the following day. It's the second day of Christmas and Nora is restless for understandable reasons because Crockstead has in a way threatened her that if uh, since Torvald has taken a decision to um, take position off from Crockstead at bank uh, because of uh, certain reasons and Crockstead has threatened Nora that either she influences uh, Torvald for um, letting um, Crockstead keep his position or be ready that he reveals his, her secret to Torvald. And Nora is very upset due to these reasons and as a result what she does she tries to um, convince Torvald to not to um, uh, dismiss um, Crockstead. However, Torvald does not show a very positive attitude towards this opinion. Now, Mrs. Lind comes over and helps Nora prepare her dress for a ball party in the neighbors the following evening. Um, it's basically the third day that there is a party um, in Nora's neighborhood and it's the second day when both of these women, they, they, they got together and they wanted to uh, prepare Nora's dress to attend that ball party. A ball party is a dancing party and that's a kind of event that takes place in uh, such societies. So. Um, when they are preparing Nora's dress, uh, there is some conversation going on between Nora and um, Christine. And Nora's suspicions, uh, suspicious behavior, because Nora is very restless. One, for the reason that um, Crockstead may reveal um, her secret to her husband. Second, uh, her husband is not very much willing to and supportive in no what Nora is requesting him to do. 
So she is kind of uh, very much restless state of mind and this, um, this restlessness is being presented through her actions too. So due to this behavior of Nora, um, Mrs. Lind, she guesses that um, Dr. Rank is the source of Nora's loan because she understands that Rank is a close and a dear friend to Torvald and um, she would think that who can help Nora in um, getting this illegal um, loan from the bank and what comes up to his her mind is Dr. Rank only because he's the only active um, third person uh, that may uh, move easily in the setting where Nora and Torvald uh, moves around. So Nora uh, guesses it, uh, sorry Christine guesses it and she shares her guess with Nora as well. However Nora denies clearly um, and Nora denies Mrs. Lent's charge but refuses to reveal the source of her distress. Now uh, what is happening that uh, Christine is trying to understand why Nora is upset. And um, in her this try of un try to understand uh, the reason of Nora's um, uh, being upset, Nora being upset, she guesses that Dr. Rank is the one who is sourced to not only to Nora let uh, let this loan have, but also of uh, bothering her. Now, what happens that Torwell arises uh, arrives and Nora again begs him to keep. Crockstead employed at the bank, but again Torvald refuses. Now this is a kind of um, building up of uh, the drama because we later on we will we'll observe that um, a lot of development in um, Nora's character and uh, as well as of Torvald's character is basically uh, it takes place during this discussion of Nora wanting something, pleading and begging her husband and her husband clearly denying her. Now when Nora presses him, when Nora is trying very hard because we understand that she shares a stake here, she's a stakeholder and her stake is that uh, is her secret and if she does not do what Crockstead warns, she may have to uh, let her secret be open to her husband and that is a kind of threatening situation for her. Um, when Nora uh, is pressing her husband hard to do what she wants, he admits and he admits that Crockster's moral behavior isn't all that bothers him. Now what is the relevance of moral behavior when both of, the, both of them, uh, the husband and wife, Torvald and Mrs. Torvald, um, Mrs. Helmer, they are talking. Um, Crockstead moral behavior is one of the reasons that Torvald uh, might have presented in front of Nora for uh, dismissing him from the job because we, if you recall, uh, when Dr. Rank was coming um, out of study, he shares out loud that Crockstead is a morally sick person. So, um, however, now Torvald reveals that it's not only Crockstead's moral behavior that is the reason that he is dismissing him. He says that he dislikes Crockstead and he dislikes Crockstead's overly familiar attitude. So it's a kind of dislike, it's a kind of uh, um, certain attitude that he keeps towards Crockstead. Why is it? We try it. We will understand it while we uh, go through certain situations. And now you, uh, you must have done your readings too. You'll be in a better position to understand what is happening in the play. Torvald and Nora, um, they argue until Torvald sends the maid to deliver Crockstead's letter of dismissal. Now, what is happening? They both are ha having this dispute and this uh, this conflicting situation, and uh, they converse and they converse and um, they are building up on uh, in the situation. And Torvald try Nor Nor Nora tries to convince Torvald, and Torvald is denying Nora. What happens? That situation gets quite intense, and in this intensity, as a consequence, Torvald calls uh, his maid and his maid is Helen and he, uh, he asks Helen to deliver the letter of dismissal to Crockstead. Another development in the story. Now, uh, 
what happens that another twist is taking place. Dr. Rang arrives and tells Nora about something. On one hand, we see that um, Nora's and Dorwell's uh, relation is um, facing some very difficult times because Nora is insisting on something and Torvald is denying that. Now what that thing is, again it has a relevance with Nora's situation because Nora is quite upset. Uh, although uh, audience know it why she's upset but her husband does not know about it. Um, okay, now Rank arrives and she, he shares something with Nora and what he shares is another um, another you say development in the story and he tells that he's close to death now and this is a news for Nora this is something that anybody would be quite uh, surprised at knowing and Dr. Rank is quite dear to family and he is um, a dear friend of Halma too so Nora tries to cheer him up and um, she begins to in in, in doing so, she begins to flirt with him. Uh, she's trying to be very nice to him and she wants to bring him pleasure uh, because when he shares that he's close to die and when he shares the intensity of this news and he shares that it's very close that he's going to be expired, Nora feels that now this is the time that he should have the pleasure in life and because he's left with very very short time. Uh, it's not only this one reason that she is uh, being very nice to um, Dr. Rank. Uh, the second reason that is that is revealed um, later on is that Nora, now Nora, um, when she um, finds that she's not being able to um, press her husband hard to do what she wants to do of not um, dismissing um, Krogstad, she thinks to use Dr. Rank as a second source and she wants to uh, pressurize her husband through his very dear friend. So she's preparing to ask him to uh, intervene the situation on her behalf and help him help her in her struggle with Torvald. Suddenly Dr. Rank reveals another thing and he tells Nora that he is in love with her. Now, this is, this is again another twist in the story. So, we are having, you know, a twist after twist. And this is basically the, uh, the climax that is being built up, the layers of the climax. Okay, now when Dr. Rank shares this with Nora that he's in love with her, in light of this revelation, Nora refuses to ask Dr. Rank for anything. We know that initially she was trying to, she was preparing him to intervene in the situation and, you know, um, help her uh, in her struggle of um, agreeing to our world for doing um, what she wants. But now when she knows that Dr. Rank is in love with her, she refuses to do this. Why she refuses, that is one thing that you need to think about. Although we will be discussing it, but keep up uh, your notes. These are the things that you need to find reason reasons for okay now um, Crockstead arrives and demands an explanation for his dismissal we learn that um, through his maid Helen Torvald um, sent this letter of dismissal to Crockstead now what happens when Crockstead got get you know get to know that he's being dismissed he suddenly gets back to Nora and ask, one, I asked you to go to your husband and, um, you know, convince him um, not to dismiss me. And what I'm getting, what I'm receiving is a letter of dismissal. So he demands this from Nora to explain. Um, he wants respectability and has changed the terms of the blackmail. Now when... Uh, he finds this letter of dismissal it's not only that um, he would like to keep his job in the bank that he would demand from Nora he wants uh, he has something else uh, he says that now he now insists to Nora that on, not only that he be rehired at the bank but that he be rehired in a higher position 
So now, uh, the blackmail is has uh, um, uh, blackmail has two fold, two folds in it. One is that initially he was wanting Nora to ask her husband not to dismiss her, but now it's not only to rehire her at the same um, uh, bank, but with a higher position. Now, when you have dismissed me, hire me again and hire me with a better position. He then puts a letter detailing Nora's debt and forgery in the Helmer's letter box. Um, it's not that he's threatening anymore because Nora refuses to help her out and she, you know, in a kind, in a way, she says and she tells uh, Crockstead the uh, intensity of the situation explaining that um, her husband is not willing to do what she's trying to, what she's convincing him for. Um, Crockstead takes the um, you know, intense measures and these extreme measures are basically that he writes a letter and write in detail about the Nora's debt and uh, her nature, her debt uh, um, being illegal in nature and how um, did she plot the whole thing. She forged her father's signature in it and she put this letter into Helmer's letter box. Now Nora gets a um, panic attack. Of course she would be getting a panic attack because this is the kind of uh, thing that she is resisting all the time. Um, and she has been resisting and uh, she shares in the very beginning with Mrs. Lynn that although she, uh, she kept the secret from her husband um, regarding this very loan, but all her life she had been working very hard, saving uh, money to uh, um, let this loan be paid off. Now when this is about to be done, when the loan has to be, uh, um, the loan has to be paid off completely and it's, it is close to this very point, um, this all uh, gets built up and uh, the situation is that the letter uh, narrating the whole event is in Torvald's mailbox. So, uh, Nora, Nora gets a panic attack and in this panic attack she goes and she shares with Mrs. Lind and what she shares, she shares everything. And Mrs. Lind instructs Nora to delay Torvald's opening his letter box and do it as long as it is possible while, uh, meanwhile she plans to go to Crockstead and speak about the whole situation. So, Mrs. Ling, uh, Lind being a um, good friend of Nora, what she does, she, she asks her, okay, I will go to Crockstead and I'll talk to him and I'll try to convince him to not to blackmail you or uh, we'll try to take uh, something out for, uh, to benefit you. And meanwhile, what you do, you somehow uh, try to, uh, uh, try that Torvald does not open his mailbox. So, he does not get this letter. So, um, in order to distract Torvald from the letterbox, Nora begins to practice the um, tarantula she will perform at that evening's costume party. What is tarantula? Tarantula is a kind of dance that she prepares to um, do in the party that is taking place the next evening. So, uh, she is trying to basically um, uh, distract Torvald from opening up his mailbox and she practices this dance in front of um, her husband to distract him. Um, in her um, agitated emotional state because we understand that Nora is not only tensed, she is angry, she is upset, um, she is afraid, so all these emotions make her um, agitated and this emotional disturbed state, she dances, however dances wildly and violently. And this displeases um, Torvald. And Torvald um, in return tells Nora that she's not being good at dance. 
Nora manages to make Torvald promise not to open his mail until after she performs at the party. Somehow, Nora, you, as you have read uh, through the, the pages, you would know that after this conversation and this act, Nora tries to manage and take this promise from her husband that unless, un, uh, until the next day when the party is over, uh, he's not going to open his mailbox. Okay, now what happens that Mrs. Lind soon returns and says that she has left Crockstead a note but that he will be gone until the following evening. Um, what happens in between? The next night as the costume party takes place, it's the third day of the drama and the costume party has taken place upstairs. Crockstead meets Mrs. Lynn downstairs in the Helmer's living room. Crockstead is meeting Nora's friend Mrs. Lynn in the Helmer's living room. The conversation reveals that the two had once deeply in love. This is another twist in the story. But Mrs. Lint left Crockstead for a wealthier man who would enable her to support her family. Now, what is this story? This is another story in, inside a story. Uh, this let us understand Mrs. Lint character, Mrs. Lint personality, the way she would think. And she once though, although she was in, deeply in love with uh, Crockstead, However, she left him uh, for a wealthier man who she thought will be a better support for her family. And we understand that she kept a mother, a sick mother at that time, and her two younger brothers uh, who, for whom she was responsible at that time. So uh, they both are discussing, and um, she tells Crockstead that now that she's free of her own um, uh, obligations including her family, uh, her married family, she, uh, uh, her husband is not there anymore and she is not having her obligation towards her parental family. Her mother died, her brothers are uh, independent enough now that uh, they would not need her anymore. So she's free of all kind of obligations and wishes to be with Crockstead and care for his children. So now she's taking a um, turn towards Crockstead for his for her own reasons uh, and we get to know here that Crockstead, Crockstead keeps a family and he has children as well. Crockstead, Crockstead is overjoyed he well, we, we know that once he ha was in deep love with um, Mrs. Lynn he's overjoyed with this news and says that he will demand his letter back before Torvald can read it and learn Nora's secret. So, uh, Mrs. Lint, uh, although she has been able to achieve um, to be, let Crockstead um, take a letter back from the mailbox, she tells him not to do it. Uh, she insists insist him now that he leaves the letter there because she believes both Torvald and Nora will be better off once the truth has been revealed. Uh, why Lint take this decision? This is another question that I would pose and I would want you to think about. Um, now soon after Crockstead um, departed, Nora and Torvald they entered. They entered back from the costume party. And um, after saying good night to Mrs. Lint, because Mrs. Lint was there already, Torvald tells Nora how desirable she looked during the party and how desirable danced, um, she danced uh, in the ball. Um, Dr. Rank is already there, um, and he was also in the party too. Um, and she has come to say good night to the family, to the Helmer's family. And he promptly inter interrupts um, Torvald's advances on Nora. And we understand why he would do that because he is in love with Nora. And he would not want Nora uh, to be in any kind of uh, close relation with her husband. However, he understands that he cannot marry her at this stage, uh, not only for the reason that she is a married woman, but for the reason that he does not have any option because he is going to die very soon. Now, after Dr. Rank leaves, 
now we know that Nora and um, Torvald, they both are there alone in their living room. Torvald finds in his letter box a few letters. Now these two letters uh, are basically, these two are not letters though, um, they are visiting cards and these visiting cards are from Dr. Rang. One interesting thing about these visiting cards is that in both of these cards there is a black cross above the name. Now what would, why would Dr. Rang put a visiting card in Torvald's box? Sec first. Second, why would there be black cross? Um, Nora reveals later on in her discussion with Dr. Rank and uh, discussion that Dr. Rank's card constitute, she knows uh, that uh, there is a black cross on the name, uh, above the name and this uh, represents um, a message, this conveys a message from Dr. Rank. For whom this message is? This message is for, not for Nora, but for Torvald. Dr. Rank wants to tell Torvald that he's not going to be there anymore and he's going to die very soon. However, why don't he tell him in person? Why don't uh, he shares this thing with Torvald um, by talking to him? Why do we need to put a letter inside his letters box in, in, a, in terms of visiting card and why, why isn't he writing clearly? Why is he giving signals and why is he giving clues about it? This is third question that I want you to think about. Uh, since Nora knows the reality, she uh, shares this with uh, Mr. Torvald and she then insists that Torvald read Crockstead's letter. Now this is another thing that one needs to think about. Initially she was the one and in fact she was the one who throughout this play has been resisting and working hard not to let her husband know about the reality, know about her secret. But now she's the one who is insisting her husband to read the letter. Another thing that you need to think about. Um, and what happens? Torvald reads the letter and when he reads the letter he's outraged, he's very angry. Um, he calls Nora a hypocrite, a liar and complains that she has ruined his happiness. And um, he gets into um, a quite outrageous state of mind and he declares that um, she will not be allowed to raise their children anymore and she's not a good woman and she blames her and she could uh, and he blames her and he criticizes her and he says that since she does not keep um, a straight character and she's a hypocrite she should not be allowed to raise their children. Helen then brings in a letter and Torvald opens it and discovers that Crockstead has returned Nora's contract. Crockstead, um, uh, Torvald, um, we see that Torvald is in some kind of fear too and Torvald's fear is that Crockstead since he has been dismissed by Torvald, he might use um, Nora's contract with forged signature that is an, that is an illegal attempt um, against uh, Helmer's family to, um, you know, um, to ruin their reputation in the society and this makes Torvald afraid because he does not want to lose his reputation. So we need to understand here and we need to see what is basically Crox, um, Torvald uh, afraid of and that we, tend, uh, we see in the very next happening when Helen brings up this letter from Crockstead in this envelope and Torvald finds the contract inside, um, he's overjoyed. All of a sudden, he's overjoyed. One who was very angry, outrageous, um, you know, he's overjoyed. And he attempts to dismiss his past insults to Nora. But his harsh words have triggered something in Nora. Um, this very aspect that Ibsen has embedded in his drama helps us understand one thing that we can trigger things happen but we may not be very much influential in pushing them back once they are out. 
we'll be discussing this again in detail um, in the later discussion. Um, now what happens that she declares something to and what she declares that despite their eight years of marriage where Nora has been a happy wife apparently though um, they do not understand one another and she says all this in the in the light of what has happened in Crockstead and Torvald's uh, um, thing. Torvald, Nora asserts, has treated her like a doll to be played with and admired. She decides to leave Torvald, declaring that she must make sense of herself and everything around her um, and she walks out slamming the door behind and the drama finishes here. Now I hope you would have understood the drama and um, you would have enjoyed the story as well. Now um, as I discussed in lecture 3 that in order to understand comprehend and then interpret a drama. You do not only need to comprehend the story, you need to comprehend the character, you need to comprehend the themes and then all these, all this comprehension enables the reader to interpret and make his own or her own sense of meaning of um, his or her study. So we'll, we'll have a quick look at um, first of all we in our first glance we'll have a quick look on all the characters and we will see what kind of character do they play in the um, drama and uh, then we will talk about the major characters and their development in the play. Nora is the protagonist of the play. Um, one thing that I would like to bring into your notice um, which we will be agree agreeing with too that so far um, the male uh, character has been a dominant figure in being protagonist of dramas. However, Ibsen brings a female character in front. That is um, the aspect of her of his um, uh, feministic approach uh, that he shares in his dramas. So Nora is the protagonist of the play and the wife of Torvald Helmer one of the major character. She is a playful, naive child who lacks knowledge of the world outside her home. Although this point of view is influenced by Torvald, Torvald's behavior towards Nora. It's not we, uh, it's not I who would see Nora as, a, um, as, as an ignorant child-like figure. Um, however, this is how Torvald would conceive her. Now, um, she's not as innocent or happy as she appears. Although she, she appears to be very innocent and happy throughout the play until the um, conflict take, takes place, um, we find that she's not very happy and she's not very innocent too. It's not innocent in a way that um, she's not unaware what is happening, although she does not react. Um, however, she keeps knowledge of the things. In the end, she finds her position in her marriage with increasing clarity and finds the strength after eight years of marriage to free herself from her oppressive situation. This is the kind of uh, courage that Ibsen portrays through his work. And this is the kind of courage that has been criticized by the critics of the time, for which he has been accused uh, to um, she, he has been accused to failing uh, failing in understanding the institute of marriage. Second character is Torvald Helmer's character. He is Nora's husband. Torvald delights in his new position at the bank, where he is quite an authoritative person and he can dismiss and hire people. Um, just as he delights in his position of authority as a husband, so we find him a person who uh, keeps authority and who enjoys authority. Um, he is not authoritative only at his position in his professional life, but also in his domestic affair too. He treats Nora like a child in a manner that is both kind and patronizing. It's like, a, um, although he's, he's, his, he's uh, Nora's husband, but at times you would find him treating Nora as father. 
He does not view Nora as an equal, but rather as a play plaything or doll to be teased and admired. So when you um, when you find somebody sharing equal rights, you are uh, a fifty percent partner in uh, giving and taking. However, inequality makes you exercise hundred percent authority of doing something or not doing something. That is what hap what is happening in the play. Um, he thinks that Nora is a kind of um, doll-like figure who he can tease anytime, who he can play with anytime, who he can admire anytime, who he can love anytime, and who he can be angry anytime as well. Um, in general, Torvald is overly concerned with his place and status in society. We see uh, towards the end in his um, intense conversation with Nora where, in, where um, in the first phase he is very angry with Nora and he declares that Nora has no right and she should not um, raise their children because she's a hypocrite and she's a liar and then soon after that suddenly he's overjoyed only by the reason that Crockstead returns the forged um, uh, copy of the letter. So this shows that more than anything, what he's concerned about, he's concerned about his reputation. Reputation in the society. And he allows his emotion to be swayed heavily by the prospect of society's respect and the fear of society's scorn. So he can allow his emotions um, to behave in any way, um, disrespecting how the other person is receiving uh, his emotional um, attitude. Um, now the third character is Crockstead. Crockstead is um, is a lawyer who went to school um, who went to school with Torvald and holds a subordinate position at Torvald's bank. So we see that Torvald and Crockstead they keep a relation um, right from the beginning when they were schoolfellows. However, at this stage, since Torvald is in an authoritative position, Crockstead is a low-level employee at bank. Crockstead's character is a um, kind of contradictory character. I would want you to analyze it um, yourself too and see where would you like to keep him towards the positive, towards the negative, a kind of development from negative to positive or from positive to negative. I want you to decide for yourself. Uh, what I find, though his bad deeds seem to stem, stem from a desire to protect his children from scorn, he's perfectly willing to use unethical tactics to achieve his goals. Uh, his willingness to allow Nora to suffer is, is um, again something that one may not like very much. But his claims to feel sympathy for her towards the end um, and the hard circumstances of his own life compel us to sympathize with him to some degree. However, again, he's a, he's a contradictory character. Um, the fourth character is Mrs. Lind, Christine Lind, who is Nora's um, childhood friend. Christine Lind is a practical, down-to-earth woman, and her sensible worldview highlights Nora's somewhat childlike outlook on life. Mrs. Lind's um, account of her life of poverty underscores the privileged nature of the life that Nora leads. Uh, we also learned that Mrs. Lind took responsibility of her sick parent, uh, whereas Nora abandoned her father uh, when he was ill. Then we see Dr. Rank as another character. He is a friend of, um, best friend of Torvald. Um, Dr. Rank stands out. Um, as the one character in the play who is by and large unconcerned with what other things, uh, others, others think about him. He's also notable for his um, stoic accept acceptance of his fate. Unlike Torvald and Nora, Dr. Rang admits to the um, diseased nature um, of his life. Um, for the most part, he avoids talking to Torvald about his um, ill health and death um, out of respect for Torvald's distress for ugliness. Okay, um, so 
Dr. Rang's character would be quite interesting to discuss in detail as well. Then we have Bob, Emmy and um, Ivor. Nora and Tyrell's three small children. In her brief interaction with her children, Nora shows herself to be a loving mother. When she later refuses to spend time with her children because she fears, since she has been accused to be a hypocrite or a liar, she may not morally be um, an appropriate mother because she may corrupt them. Um, whether we will take it as um, a commitment to a mother's uh, love for her children to raise them up morally or her commitment to her mother uh, to a mother's love to her children of leaving them that we need to decide another character is Anne Mary and Mary is children's nanny uh, Though Ibsen doesn't fully develop her character and Mary seems to be a kindly woman who has genuine affection for Nora. She had to give up her own daughter uh, in order to take the nursing job offered by Nora's father. Um, so we know that Nanny has been with Nora since her childhood and she does not only take care of uh, Nora but of her uh, children as well. Thus, uh, in, in this process, she left her own kids. So she's a very affectionate character towards Nora, a mother-like figure. Thus, she shares with Nora and Mrs. Lynn the act of sacrificing her own happiness out of economic necessity. So we see another theme emerging here, and that, that's, emer that's a theme of sacrifice, and th sacrifice of women in particular. Um, Nora's father is another character, though Nora's father is dead before the action of the play be begins. Uh, the characters uh, in the play referring to him throughout the play. We do not see Nora's father on stage, however, she, he has been referred again and again by the characters. Um, although we find Nora that she's, she clearly loves her father and she admires uh, her father as well, Nora also comes to blame him for contributing to her um, subservient position in life and the kind of attitude that she developed and kept for eight years towards her husband. And she finds that for most of the part her father is um, a major contributor in it. Um, after having an overview of all the characters, now I guess we are ready to move on with the, with the analysis of the major characters. And for that matter, I'll be helping you understand and analyze five of these characters, including Nora Helmer, Torvald Helmer, Crockstead, Dr. Rank, and Mrs. Christine Lent. So let's talk about Nora Helmer first. Um, we will be analyzing this character um, in different different aspects of her character. Uh, we will analyze her childlike personality. Um, we find Nora desperate, desperate for several things. So this desperation is one aspect of her personality. We will see that she is, whether she's an intelligent woman or um, she is innocent as she apparently is represented in the first half of the play. We will find Nora's transformation and we will see what are the reasons and what kind of transformed self Nora finds in the end. Um, Nora's character is one of the most complex characters of 19th century drama. Um, her character is a, is, is a real representation of 20th century um, women as well. So, um, we will see Nora Helmer prances about in the first act and prances this word is a kind of imagery that shows her joyful, cheerful, jumping nature um, in the very beginning. However, towards the second end, she behaves desperately. She becomes quite a desperate woman. Um, and when we see her in the third part of the drama, towards the uh, final acts, um, we find that she gains a stark sense of reality during the development of the play. So, 
these were the different stages of her development. Now let's see and try to understand her character. Uh, in the beginning of the play, Nora seems a very happy, affectionate, a happy woman, an affectionate mother, and an excited wife. Um, we find her uh, kind of a satisfied, happily wedded, married woman um, who is um, a great mother too. And we find that she takes pleasure in the company of her children, friends and husband. And in the beginning she does not seem to mind her doll-like existence in which she is um, cuddled, pampered and patronized. And she would want her husband to treat her like that. Um, although she is intelligent and possesses cap uh, capacities beyond mere wifehood and that is very much evident through her um, act of uh, um, loaning from the bank, then her act of um, illegal loaning, then the way she plans the illegal loan, the way she plans to make it a secret and the way she keeps the secret up and the way she is repaying the debt to come out of it. So she is not a kind of unaware, um, foolish woman. She is a very intelligent woman and um, her capacities we can see beyond her being a woman, a mother and a wife. Um, she is a very wise um, lady too. She shows her fierce determination, ambition and courage. Her fierce determination can be seen the way she um, enables her husband move from one country to, na to another country without the, the family keeping any money. The family wasn't keeping any money. So she plans and arranges and then uh, let them have a loan from the bank. So sh this shows her determination and this shows again the way she enables, uh, uh, the way she works for returning the loan is another act of her determination. Um, her ambition is very clear, her ambitious self is clear and the courage that she takes in um, in plotting and materializing an illegal loan um, is very much evident from it. And then she, the courage she takes in uh, taking the final decision in the play towards the end of leaving her, not only her husband but her children is another uh, act of uh, her courage. Crockstead's blackmail and the trauma that follows um, do not change Nora's nature. Uh, they open her eyes to her unfulfilled and underappreciated um, potential and she says that I have been performing tricks for you Torvald she says during her climatic confrontation with him. This shows that she has been very well aware of her role and her presentation in her life and in Torvald's life as well. She is not an unaware being. Um, then we find that Nora comes to realize that in addition to her literal dancing and singing tricks, she has been putting on a show throughout her marriage. Here there are two things. One that this dancing and singing is shown one way of the character's catharsis that she literally uses this way to let her upset and intense emotion be out. Then she finds that it's not only a catharsis, basically it's not only the literal dance and singing, it's, it's a way of her life, it's an attitude of her life that she's spending with her husband. Her marriage life, her married life is like that, that she has become an object of um, pleasure for her husband only. And she does not keep any standing, any status for her sake. And then we see Nora's awakening, a kind of self-realization, a kind of um, reality, um, seeing of reality and acceptance of reality. Although she has not been totally unaware and that her life is at odds with her um, true personality, however, towards the end, she is able to um, admit that she has been deprived of it, deprived of it. 
Um, she defies straw world in small yet meaningful ways. It's not that we find her being innocent and we find her being very much submissive, um, a kind of woman and kind, a kind of wife who would admit everything what her husband would say. However, we see and we find her that she has courage of denying her husband ever of doing what he does not wish to, we wish her to do. Um, by eating macrons and then lying to him about it, for instance, um, it's a show of her challenging nature. Um, and I would want you to collect instances of her challenging nature, um, her coming to realization, her ambitious nature, her determinant nature from the play. So all the qualities that I am mentioning here um, and you would be finding in the reading too, I would want you to keep a log where you are noting down these adjectives, the attributes of her personality along with the incidents that you take from the novel, uh, from the drama, I'm sorry. Um, and then we find her need for rebellion um, culminating in her walking out on her husband and children to find independence. She keeps a rebellious nature. Um, she can rebel. She can stand against. She has a courage to stand against. She can fight for. And in this fight, we find that a woman, a mother, um, who is very passionate about um, herself being treated like a doll, treated like a secured um, relation and who would do anything for her children is ready to let this privilege go off, let this uh, beauty of her life go off to find independence. Uh, and this is again um, an aspect of her personality. Uh, why would I say that Nora keeps a childlike personality? Or why would you find uh, her like that? Uh, these are some of the instances that um, I would like to share with you. And, but however, I would want you to do all your efforts in order to add into them. Don't take them uh, sufficient for your knowledge. These are some major things. However, uh, it depends how deeply you read and understand the play to add instances into them. In the beginning, Nora's exhibits, Nora exhibits many childish um, qualities. The, the audience first sees her when she returns from a um, seemingly extravagant Christmas shopping um, exercise. She eats a few desserts which she has secretly purchased. Um, so the thing that her husband does not like, but she would do it because she likes doing them. When her um, condescending husband, Torvald Helmer, asks if she has been sneaking Macron's, she denies it wholeheartedly. So she keeps a personality of uh, uh, lying where it is required to lie. Uh, with this minor act of deception, the audience learns that Nora is quite capable of lying as well. Uh, she's more childlike when she interacts with her husband. The way she talks to her, uh, the way she talks to her husband, the kind of language she uses, the kind of structure she uses, th and the language and the style the writer adopts here will let you understand what kind of relation uh, she keeps with her husband, and she would. Um, would expect from him. She behaves playfully yet obediently in his presence, always coaxing favors from him instead of communicating as equals. Uh, the kind of uh, status and the kind of relation she shares with her husband is basically not entirely what her husband would offer her, but it is something that she would expect from him in that particular way. Um, that it's not only what other person do with you, it's that what you let the other person do with you. It's you giving the freedom to the other party to treat you the way that they are treating you. So, Torvald gently chides Nora throughout the play and he gently, he keeps on criticizing her for one thing or another. And Nora um, good naturally responds to his criticism as though she were, um, she were some loyal pet. 
so it's again a childlike attribute like a um, a daughter would keep to her father that a father would keep on telling her what to do what not to do and what you have already done probably is not right and you will not um, question uh, your father's uh, observation and you would tend to listen to him for uh, this belief in him that he would not um, you know criticize something out of um, uh, nothing and there would be something wrong that you would have done that your father is telling you so that's that's that kind of relation that we observe in the beginning uh, however the desperation this desperate self of Nora we observe this desperate self of Nora um, when the disgruntled Nils Krogstad um, threatens to reveal the truth about her forgery Nora realizes that she has potentially scandalized uh, Torvald Helmer's uh, good name and reputation. And she begins to question uh, her own morality, something um, she has never done before. And she um, is questioning herself whether she has done something wrong. Although we understand that what she has done is, is, was a try to secure her life, to secure her husband in a way. However, how do you under interpret um, this event and this um, development of the play is uh, one thing that I would like you to think about. Now, there is something going on the screen. However, there is something going inside the character as well. And we will find Nora's character is a kind of, uh, is a kind of, her conscious has become a kind of spiral-like movement uh, where she is trying to find herself. And she has not been uh, uh, able to uh, know what she wants and what she likes and what she would like to have in her life. Um, and she, um, once that uh, she has spent um, these many years in her married life with her children and husband and she has been enjoying a life uh, the way she wanted. When this event um, took place where she got confronted with Crockstead's uh, um, being a, a, a threat to her reputation in her husband's eye and she is being questioned by her husband uh, who she has been very dear to uh, throughout this play and for whom she has taken this step of loaning uh, from the bank and doing this uh, act of forgery when she's accused by him being a hypocrite and being a liar um, she questions herself consciously or unconsciously did she do something wrong by loaning from the bank or loaning illegally or not letting her husband know about it were her actions appropriate under the circumstances when her husband was sick and they had to move out of the country however they did not have any money at all will the courts convict her if it is proved and if Crockstead reveals the secret what will be the consequences then after she being accused by her husband she's questioning herself is she an improper wife or is she a good wife at all? When her, hus uh, her husband declares that she's not allowed anymore to raise their children, she finally questions. This question has become a kind of final nail in the coffin that she thinks, is she a terrible mother? So these questions make Nora think and think so hard that she contemplates suicide in order to eliminate the dishonor she has earned in her married life. She also hopes to prevent Torvald from sacrificing himself and going to prison in order to save her from um, persecution. And when she is into this thought process, we can see how that she still loves her husband. And she wants to um, uh, prevent um, Torvald from going through any hard decisions and hardship of life as well. 
Yet it remains debatable as to whether or not she would truly follow through and jump in the, in the icy river. Crockstead doubts her ability to do so. Also during the uh, climatic scene in Act 3, Nora seems to stall before running out into the night to end her life. Torvald stops her all too easily, perhaps because she knows that deep down she wants to be saved. So we don't know, uh, although she is thinking and contemplating that she should commit suicide, whether she has this courage or not. And then Nora's transformation. Nora's transformation occurs when the truth is finally revealed. And the truth is revealed through Torvalds, her husband. Um, he brings disgust towards Nora and their relation um, by abusing, by accusing her for being a criminal, criminal of an illegal act. Um, the, pro the protagonist realizes, Nora realizes that her husband is a very different person than she once believed. And her um, all thoughts are getting some kind of resolution now uh, where she was thinking that he, um, she would want to you know, prevent him from any kind of bad consequences uh, which he would face um, as a consequence of Nora's deed. Torvald has no intention of taking the blame for Nora's crime. That is very true and clear now. Um, and Nora gets to know it very well. Um, she thought for certain that he would selflessly give up everything for her. However, this is not true. When he fails to do this, she accepts the fact that their marriage has been an illusion. This illusion is not that illusion that we discussed. This is an illusion, a dreamlike situation. That is an illusion, uh, a reference from past. This is I A L L U S I O N. That is A L L, um, and that follows. So, um, Nora feels that their false devotion towards each other has been merely a kind of play, a kind of game, and she has been his child wife and his doll that he kept playing with and kept getting pleasure from. The monologue in which she calmly confronts Torvald serves as one of the Ibsen's finest literary movement, movements. Um, many critics and theatre goers who would go to watch this play question the morality of the play's resolution where Nora leaves her husband and her kids. And they say that why does Nora leave not only Torvald but her children as well. And that is why um, uh, we see the social significance of this um, uh, ending. Um, since the premiere of Ibsen's um, Adol's House, uh, much has been discussed regarding the final controversial scene. Um, in fact, some productions in Germany refused to produce the original ending. Uh, Ibsen acquainted um, um, Ibsen gradually um, writes and um, because he has been forced to do that because the theatre did not accept, the theatre of the time did not accept this uh, um, this new philosophy of marriage institution. Um, he had to write an alternative ending in which Nora breaks down and cries deciding to stay but only for her children's sake. So although he uh, presents that Nora is not happy with her husband but he has to uh, stay back uh, for the sake of their children. Some argue that Nora leaves her home purely because she is selfish. Um, this is a criticism on Nora's character and she does not want to forgive Torvald. She would rather start another life than try to fix her existing uh, complexity of life. Or perhaps she feels that Torvald was right and she is a child who knows nothing of the world and since she knows so little about herself or society, she feels that she is an inadequate mother, an improper wife and hence she leaves the children because she feels it is for their benefit, um, uh, although it is painful to her, but she is leaving for their benefit to become a better person without her. 
So Nora Helmer's last words are hopeful, yet her final action is less optimistic. In criticism, in critics' eyes, she leaves Towers explaining that there is a slight chance they could become man and wife once again, but only if a miracle of miracles occurred. This gives Torvald a brief ray of hope. However, just as he repeats Nora's notion of miracles, his wife exits and slams the door, symbolizing the finality of their relationship, a door that is closed now forever. So, this tells us a lot about Nora's character, the protagonist of the drama. I hope that um, knowing Nora's character uh, in depth, um, it will not only help you to understand the theme of the drama, the uh, thematical representation of society, but also will help you understand the other characters as well and the plot um, in its totality. So what we did in today's lecture, we talked about um, the plot, we uh, continued where we left it in lecture 3 um, um, and we finished act 1 in lecture 3. In lecture 4 we continued the plot and we finished and we saw how the story was and how the story was like. Um, we went through um, a quick analysis, a quick look at all the characters and we had a uh, um, depth analysis of one of the major characters, the protagonist of the drama, um, Nora Helmer. And um, inshallah, in our lex next lecture, in lecture 5, we are going to continue with the major character analysis of rest of the characters. Uh, we will then analyze uh, the themes, motives and um, Nora's definition of freedom. For now, I'll finish our talk over here. We'll see you inshallah in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz.